So the first part of the Cinderella understructure for her ball gown was the corset. And after getting that finished, the next part was to move on to her crinoline. Now the great thing about this is we have a wonderful photo of the original crinoline used in the dress and the movie. This structure of this crinoline is quite different than anything I have ever really seen before. It has an elliptical shape to it, and as you can see, the back part of the hoop skirt is larger than the front. And this is something that is structurally challenging to achieve, but it is possible because I have done it three times. I have made five Cinderella dresses so far, and two of them were my upgraded versions. And with these versions, I included different techniques in them, and one of them was a replica crinoline. So I first designed this replica of the crinoline, and I then made a second one for a different customer. And now the third one is the one that I have just finished and accomplished for this sixth replica that I am embarking on and taking all of you along on this channel. So anyway, the pattern of this crinoline is actually available for sale. I have decided to turn my replica design into a diagram slash pattern that you can order. And we'll walk through the construction of this crinoline because it is quite unique but also making a hoop skirt or a crinoline, which you might hear me go back and forth between a hoop skirt and a crinoline. I usually call this type of structure a hoop skirt, but it is called many times a crinoline when Sandy Powell and the design team talk about it. So for the purpose of that, I will be calling it a crinoline. But anyway, this design is quite unique and it's somewhat of a challenge to create, but with the diagram that I have for sale, it should be fairly easy. This crinoline is very important to the structure of the skirt of the ball gown because it is the base foundation of the petticoats and the skirt and really helps create the shape that the ball gown has. It helps create the volume, but also one of the main things it does is it creates a larger back to the skirt versus the slightly flatter front. And this is part of the design that is really important to achieve. So with that, let's go on to constructing this crinoline. For the supplies that I'm using, I've got a very thick steel boning, which likes to go wonky when you move it and it can be a little bit dangerous. So make sure it's secured well before messing with it because it can spring and just not be a good situation but I am using about 34 and a half yards of this thick steel boning, and then the same amount in a boning casing. This boning casing is about 5 8 inch wide and can fit half inch boning. So it is a little large for my steel boning, but it works. You'll of course need boning cutters and then also some ribbon. I'm just using a basic satin ribbon. It is half inch, it is a little heavier weight, and I would recommend a heavier weight satin than just a thin satin. And then also I've got my diagram slash pattern, which you can purchase at the link that I mentioned, but it just has the measurements and all you need to construct this crinoline. And then these plastic sewing clips come in extremely handy for the construction process of this crinoline. So I highly recommend using something like this for the process. The first step was to cut out my boning and boning channels in the correct lengths. And since I have already designed this, I know exactly what measurements, and if you're making it, you'll have my diagram, so you'll know those correct measurements. But make sure you double, triple check to make sure you're cutting it at the correct length. After getting the boning channels cut out, I'm moving on to my ribbon, again using the measurements that I have on my diagram. For the waistband, I am using a one inch piece of twill tape. This is where I'm going to start attaching my ribbons. So the vertical ribbons go vertical along the crinoline and are attached from the waistband and then they attach all the hoops of this crinoline together. And there will be a pattern as to how to place these ribbons on the waistband, such as what angle and all that. After getting those ribbons attached, which by the way, you can go ahead and sew these in place, I still wanted to confirm that my pattern was correct and so I just pinned them in place in case I needed to eventually adjust them. So now I can start assembling the boning channels to these ribbons. I'm first going to start with one of the circular hoops to this crinoline. 
So I first move down the ribbon, marking the placement of the hoop that I'm trying to attach. And now I'm going to attach my circular piece of boning to these markings. As you can see, I'm using plastic clips, and this is keeping the two ends of the boning together to create that circular boning. So as you can see, I have this circular one and I'm spacing out these ribbons based on my measurements. The process of constructing this crinoline takes a lot of measuring and remeasuring and making sure all the measurements add up. After getting this base circle hoop placed, I'm now going to start on the U-shaped boning pieces. These are the pieces that create the elliptical shape of this crinoline. So now I have all these U-shaped pieces placed and that bottom circular hoop. This is where things got a little bit weird. I just couldn't figure out why my diagram was not working out. So here's where I was having a major flaw with the notes and what was happening in front of me with the boning and ribbon and boning casings. It was not adding up. My math that I had recorded on those old notes was not working. It was giving me a huge headache because it just was not working. I have no idea how I did math back then, but one thing for sure, I didn't record it as well as I should have, and my design was a little bit not working. So let's take a pause while I figure out what was going on and try and fix the problem. Let's hear a little bit from a sponsor. I'm happy to say that Skillshare is the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes to inspire creativity and arouse the curious. Explore new skills, hone existing ones, and go down the rabbit hole of creativity. Always learning is a motto for me, so Skillshare is definitely the perfect place to scroll. While doing so, a class popped up which could really hone my photography skills. It's DIY product photography, style and shoot creative stills by Rachel Gulotta and Daniel Inskeep. Learning how to make a still inanimate object pop in a photo is something I so need help with. The first thousand people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium memberships and after that, it's only about $10 a month. So with that message, let's move on. Going back to the crinoline and seeing what we can do to fix this math problem note issues that somehow didn't get recorded properly. Now back at it, this time I'm still using my diagram, but I'm slightly adjusting it to help correct some of the issues that I seem to come upon. Now it's important to note out that the pattern diagram that you would purchase if you chose to would be the final design of this crinoline with all the kinks worked out and all the math adding up. You wouldn't have to do any of this adjusting that I'm having to do now. The process of using the measurements is to mark out the spacing of the ribbons compared to the boning connection. The measurements go from one top of the boning channel to the next top of the boning channel. And for the boning channel, it goes from one edge of the ribbon to the next ribbon, the same edge. And then you're now going to connect both of these measurements together to create the proper measurement. You're measuring along the middle of both of these pieces. So it's the measurement of the middle of the ribbon and the middle of the boning channel. So here you can see that lining of the two pins and I'm aligning it at the middle of each of these pieces. And then I do a double pin to make sure that the measurement stays secure and it doesn't slip about. Now after getting those rearranged and marked out, I then went on to create the top two circle hoops that helps push out the top back of the crinoline. And again, this was something I had to readjust and adjust and just play around with to create the correct shape, but again, it'll be easier with my final diagram. 
And then here comes the scary boning cutting. It really is a process that you kind of want to shield your face from and it's just really springy bony. So after getting this top part of the cage crinoline constructed, I'm now going to add the bottom rungs of this crinoline. And I marked the front and the back of these hoops, got those pinned in place, and now I'm adjusting those bottom hoops to correctly lay. Somewhere along my adjustment process, I added several more vertical ribbons to the design. Even though this makes it a little less accurate to the original crinoline, I felt like replicating the shape was more important than replicating the certain amount of ribbons that the original crinoline has. So to recap on how you use those measurements, again, it's the top of the boning channel to the next top of the boning channel and so on and so forth. And the same for the boning channels. From the edge of one ribbon to the same edge of the next ribbon. And then you pull those two together and then get them secured in place. Now I started to run out of pins, so I'm just single pinning, but again, I would highly recommend using two pins to make sure nothing comes out of place. So here we have the pinned together crinoline. I have adjusted all the kinks and I've recorded the measurements and I can now go on to sewing it. Now, something I forgot to show adding was I did add one string to help keep the back in the back. It's currently just tied to this circular boning piece, but it will be securely sewn to that hoop. And then I've also added these straight pieces of boning, which will hold the handles to this crinoline. If you remember the original design, you see those straight boning pieces plus a handle. And then also these, since I adjusted it, it's sticking out like that, it'll be trimmed closely to that circular hoop. Before I go and take out the boning and then sew it all together, I clearly mark the places that are being held together with the clips because those will not stay in place when I take out the boning. This is a little bit of a daunting part of the process just because you really wanna make sure your pins are holding together and all that. Now to sew it all together. This is a part that takes some time, but it is a necessary step. And something to always remember when you're sewing it is you have boning channels. So you cannot sew into that boning channel or you will close it off and won't be able to get your boning in. So on the places that you're connecting the boning channels to the ribbon, it's a fairly straightforward process of sewing along the edge of that boning channel to the ribbon. Something along the process that I do not do is trim these strings. I just move the foot and leave the strings as they are. I found it easiest just to cut them all out all at once at the end of sewing it all together. Now for the places where we have two boning channels intercrossing each other, this is where you need to remember not to just sew straight like you have been doing with your ribbon connections because you would block one channel or the other. So on these connections, first get down the ribbon to boning connections and then use your markings to correctly pin those two channels together. So here I actually have some messed up markings, but then I know which ones are correct. And I'm just lining those up so I know exactly where it's supposed to lay. I get that pinned in place and now I can do some sewing. Now here's where I get a little bit wonky. I am just sewing at that little corner where the two bonies connect. I'm not going all the way across. I'm just doing that little edge where you have a little bit of leeway. Since my boning channel is a bit wider than my boning, I can go in a little bit into that channel and not obstruct the channel altogether. So it is just secured at those four points. As long as you do a lot of tight, tiny stitches at those corners, it will hold together. And now for the circular hoops, we need to connect both those ends, which was originally held together by clips. And so I've marked the center point where they overlap. The outer edge of the channel, I fold over the end to secure that raw edge and to close off the channel. But with the under edge, I'm not going to fold it over and it's just gonna lay open like that. This is the opening for my channel. And then I just do a zigzag along both edges to secure this all in place. Now before I finish sewing, I have one more ribbon to apply. That's the center front ribbon that connects the five circular hoops at the bottom of this crinoline. I just wait to add this final piece of ribbon until I have those connections sewn together. Now for the ends of the vertical ribbons, along the wrong side of the boning channel, I fold that raw end under, 
and then I'll sew it in place just with a straight stitch along where I have it pinned. Now another thing that I did not pin in place when I had all the boning in and such and was constructing it were the handles. I'm just using the boning channels and I'm creating a little loop and sewing it to that straight piece of boning that I added into the front. Again, I need openings for this and they're both boning channels so I can't sew across to close off the end. So I'm just securing the edges together with some zigzag stitch and I'll do hand sewing later on to close that channel. And then of course it needs to be sewn to the base crinoline. After about an hour of trimming threads, all of those are gone and I can finally move on to inserting the boning. Now one of the first things I did was the handles. To keep the handles firm against that base straight piece of boning, I bent the end slightly and that will help keep the handles sturdy. So I just mark where I need it to be bent, use some pliers, get it held in place, and then just brute force to make it bend. And then some magic, not really, to get the boning in place. I now have a couple more things that I need to do to finish up the process. And that's some hand sewing to get all the ends securely sewn in place so the boning doesn't start wiggling out as you wear it. I'm just using double thick strong thread and you will need a thimble for this process and securing that end in place. And here's where I made a major faux pas. I forgot to finish up the waistband before inserting the boning. So now I need to do that with all the boning in place, which is a challenge, but I am folding the one inch twill tape over onto itself. And this is securing those raw ribbon ends. And then I'm just going to sew it closed. This achieves a nice narrow waistband, but also secures those raw ends of the ribbon. And yes, this is how I have to sew the waistband together. I guess I could have hand sewn it together, but I really didn't want to do that. And final thing is some hooks and eyes to secure that waistband closed. I would have done a dress clasp instead of two hooks and eyes, but my half inch waistband did not fit one. Even though I say I am finished with the crinoline, you might notice these clips here at the center front. I have left these boning channels open currently and the clips are holding the boning in place. I wanted to do this because I'm not sure if I'm going to add a second piece of boning in these five hoops. This would create a stronger base to the crinoline and it will have a less chance of collapsing once the petticoats are on top. But before I go and use that boning and spend that extra money, I wanted to see how it would hold up to the petticoat first. So I'll be waiting on that until I have the petticoat made. And there you have it making a crinoline for the Cinderella ball gown and a replica crinoline at that. Again, you can find the diagram slash pattern that I created at the link that pops up and there'll be one in the description as well. Thank you all for watching and a huge thank you to my patrons who continually support me in so many ways. And if you want to learn more about that, the link will pop up and there'll be one in the description below. But they are amazing, so thank you patrons. And now go out into your own sewing area and learn, create, and inspire.